We hit DC. I went live over there on Instagram. And on Instagram, they have the 4K feature. So, you know, you know how YouTube is. But we over here, man. And yeah, Beasley, stay hard on me. Keep your, keep your foot on them on their neck, man. I see you. And I'm glad I'm here, you know, uh, to be at the statue of Benjamin Banneker, you know, just representation of who he was in real life. Very prolific man. You know, he was a scientist, architect. Um, I mean, he actually, there's a lot of things that he was uh, responsible for. And he was a man ahead of his time. He was actually a genius. So... You know, we're here to, we're here at the African American Museum and here in Washington, D.C. So yeah, we, we really out here just uh, doing our thing and kicking it. And we're seeing a lot of artifacts. So I did do a live on my Instagram for those that don't know. Yeah. Attention visitors, running, horse playing, and playing on or throwing items off balconies is strictly prohibited and will result in an escort out of the building. Oh, wow. Somebody, somebody dug it out right here in the African American Museum. They want to be part of history. Mm hmm. Phyllis Wheatley, poet. I read about her in history books. During the revolution, Felix Wheatley, 1753-1784, was a household name famous for having published poems on various subjects, religious and moral. In 1773, Wheatley was about seven, about age seven when she arrived in America in 1761, after being kidnapped in Senegal and sold into slavery as an enslaved girl who had a master classical English, Latin, Greek, she was held up as a symbol of achievement by, the, by international anti-slavery advocates once freed. She and her husband, John Peters, faced persistent poverty despite their talents. What's going on, um, Heavy Bear? Kiki done kind of got away from me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go look for her real quick, y'all. I think at the museum, everybody want a crowd that, uh, you know, I'm a crowd. So, let's talk about the Haitian Revolution. Toussaint Le Orochoa. Toussaint Le Overture. A lot of Haitians revere him to this day. And let me read it. It's supposed to be the statue of Toussaint Le Overture. Toussaint Le Overture said that he was born a slave, but naturally gave the soul of a free man. Throughout his life, he fought for freedom. He was born a slave in Rita, St. Diome, now in Haiti, but freed in 1776, age 33, well-educated. He could speak both French and Creole during the Haitian Revolution. He used his military, political, economic, and knowledge to govern the country. Okay. Uh, this is Prince Hall Freemasonry. Um, so let's read on Prince Hall and what the United States government, you know, them, 
the Masons, they, have, they got all kind of myth, mythical things about him. So let's just see what the United States government has to say about, you know, okay. Prince Hall was born enslaved in Boston, Massachusetts, gained his freedom shortly after the Revolution War, Revolutionary War. An entrepreneur, property owner, and taxpayer, Prince Hall is credited with founding the African American, but the Af my African Lodge of the Honorable Society of Free Accepted Masons, the first lodge of Black Freemasonry. Okay. I guess these are original manuscripts. What? Let me go over here and check out some of the women over here because I did skip past some of it. Because it was kind of crowded. How you doing? It was kind of crowded over here. Mm -hmm. Now, boy, that's a book report right there, ain't it? That's for the Haitian Revolution right here. This is Rachel Crayfield. Early image is likely first hall of color silhouette of African American woman. It shows Rachel Crayfield labored for the Dickey family of Oxford, Pennsylvania. Although she is listed as a servant in the family papers, Reverend Ebenezer Dickey commits her to his wife, Jane, and two enslaved children in his family. I mean, in 1731, Will. Crayford appeared in account books for Dickey's 200-acre farm until 1847 when slavery was formally abolished in Pennsylvania. All right. I never knew about that person. So let's move around, y'all. Let's move around. It's very nice here. It was kind of it was kind of looking a little boring when we first came through. When for y'all say, when I beheld the frantic and appearance of action acting up, so don't think you know that we beheld offered for sale to him who would give the most. James F. Lick. All right. So yeah, you, you guys are here with Professor Octavius. And um, we're just moving around, y'all. Yeah. Moving around. And I saw Kiki over here. She done got into her own little thing, I see. So at first we was like, eh. and now you see she done kind of got away from me. So 
See, she's interested right now, y'all. Hey, babe. So this cabin was actually um, taken? I'm on live. Oh, okay. This, um, this is a cabin oh, it's a real. slaves. Yeah, it was taken from South Carolina in 2013. So it was there from 1853 to 2013. You should look on the inside. It's not much to it, but mm -hmm. that's, that's where the edge is in. You can smell the old wood. This is Slave Quarter, y'all. Mm. Point of Pines Cabin. So what was the cabin? Um, give us a breakdown on it. You was over there reading on it. Yeah, it was just, uh, it showed the family over there that um, had it, they, the, the slave that built it, put together some wood, you know, mm -hmm. put together, and it's just been there. Mm -hmm. I guess it's on the plantation. You know, yeah. Um, and now it's here. They donated it to the museum. A lot of stuff has been donated to museums. There's a book over there that a slave was writing in. Um, you know how that term they have, like, if you want to keep something from a black person, put it in a book. Well, over there is talking about how they didn't want the slaves to know how to read because if they found out how to read, information was uh, written. Mm -hmm. And if they found out how to read, they would know about, like, uh, slavery being ended, and they would know about new laws to benefit, you know, anti-slavery stuff going on, or where they could get resources, stuff like that, um, or what we call resources today. So that's why they would get in a lot of punishment for reading. And so this one slave, uh, he wanted to study, so the other slaves agreed to do his work for him so that he could, you know, get more knowledge on how to read and how to keep up with that stuff. And the book is over there. It also has some pictures of slaves um, from back I in was the day that was donated. We almost got more bored at first, right? Yeah. And then we came down here. So yeah, we at the bottom of the museum right now. Yeah, so what it we in does, the basement. it takes you into um, our culture today, and then it takes you uh, a look to like how Africa was before slavery, mm. how Europe was before slavery, some of the other um, places where sla slavery um, was introduced. And then it showed you like, the, you can hear the Africans talk about when they were uh, getting, I won't even say recruited, but stolen. Yeah. And forced onto those ships. And, and how a lot of them- was violating 10 year old children. Mm -hmm. And there was just things they never thought they would see. This is the recordings of the slaves. Yeah, and yeah. so there's a uh, there's a lot of donated stuff here. Mm. Parts of the ships have been donated, um, and then the see, modern stuff. We saw the like we saw the chains too. Yeah, we saw the chains. The chains that, that they had all the people in, on, in, uh, the, in the ships. Yeah, there's a lot of Aboriginals. People on YouTube will say there's no. We uh, see a lot of the signs, like the original signs. Like, this is real stuff right here. Mm -hmm. um, we see a lot of the uh, paperwork where they um, calculated how many pounds of cotton their slaves picked, yeah. uh, you know, to determine whether they had done a good job for the day or not. Uh, we see some of their worship items over there. Some of them were Muslim and stuff. Like, I you know in slave uh, movies and stuff, it doesn't really talk about that. It just mostly talks about the Christian faith, but it talks about other faiths. Uh, that they had, and it just gives you the whole breakdown. Mm -hmm. So yeah, guys, uh, you see it, and how you doing, Alcatel? So we're at the African American Museum in Washington D.C. So this is what they're trying to say, Rob, look like <laughs> Frederick Douglass. You know, so they say Rob got the Frederick Douglass haircut. 
Well, not haircut, the hair. Yeah. And I guess, it's, what is it, his diary? When they were building this, they put on stuff in first. For those that just came in, his surgery on the truth. And these are original manuscripts that they have here. And upstairs, they actually have like, um, I showed it on my Instagram. Yeah, I, I showed it on my Instagram earlier, but my sound wasn't good because I had the wrong Bluetooth connected. And they were showing like, Erica Badu's head wrap, Prince, some of his instruments. Um, I think they had something of Bart Marley up there, but I really couldn't see it. So, here's a banjo. Mm -hmm. It's that bit low. Dave Holden was shouting instead of cheering the one man and the mom and papa to another. Slave cries and takes on song awful. Mm. If a woman had lots of children, she was so formal. As yeah. Child, she was a good freedom. I can see that old block now. My cousin Eliza was Pretty, really good. The master was a father. When the girls in the big house had those come in to see the fancy the girl trade, 1835. So, so I read a little bit of it. It said, Many white men preyed upon African American women and girls during the domestic slave trade, a new category emerged known as fancy girls. Women purchased for sexual exploitation. These women were sold at rates significantly higher than the price of other enslaved persons. Polly, a 16-year-old, strived having yellow complexion and black eyes, was likely sold as a fancy girl, a gift of Candace Greeny. Uh, I'm pretty pretty sure they do uh, have some of that. So it's just so much here, bro. It's just so much here. Hey, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to this channel. This is the Enlightened Channel. And... Kiki ain't got caught up in this stuff, man. And so she got doing her own thing. Okay. Yeah. This is this is a real slave quarter right here at Alcatown. Built by slave. They're showing this right here. This is the family. And you can actually smell the old wood. It smells old. Yeah, you know, I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about, but you from the South, you know what I'm talking about. One of them old houses, so it smells like an old house. They put it in here. I'm trying to see if they got something on Elk, um, Nat Turner. I'm gonna call it Nat Turner Alcatown. This is what Kiki was talking about. Some of them babies so fat and big, I had to talk to feet while another gal talk to head. I was such a little one, about seven or eight years old. 
We had to steal away at night to have church on the ditch bank and crawl home on the valley. Once the overseers hear us praying, give us one day one hundred lashes.